So today I want to show you how I created this, this grain effect that you see here. This is actually created in Illustrator, even though normally I would do something like this in Photoshop by creating this vector shell and then importing it into Photoshop and then kind of painting in the grain texture with a brush set to dissolve. This can also be done in Illustrator, which can occasionally come in handy, especially if I need the art to be flexible and sizing. So I want to quickly show you how to do this on this little keyboard that I've created here in Adobe Illustrator. But I don't want a line like this. Uh, I, I want to show that it's inset or recessed from the casing around it. So, so I want to create sort of a gradated shadow for that. Uh, so the way the grain effect is going to be created is using transparency masks. So I'm basically going to mask out all the parts of this area that I don't want in order to create this shadow. So first I'm going to make that a solid fill. I'm also going to change this to a red color instead of the, the black. Okay, so now I'm going to go up here to the transparency tool. And if you don't have this here on your, on your uh, tool palette area like I do, uh, you can go up to Window uh, and Transparency uh, if yours isn't pulled up. So now that I'm here and I have this shape selected, I'm going to click Make Mask. Then I'm going to uncheck Clip. And then I'm going to click in this white square area, which is the mask area. It's sort of So here you can see it shows my artwork, and here is where I make the mask. So many of you may have used transparency masks, but just in case, here's a brief intro. So like when making masks in Photoshop, any part of the mask that are solid black uh, will be masked out. So I'll make a black shape here. Of course, that's red now. And you can see that some of that's still showing through a little bit of pink. That means that this black isn't pure. So I'm going to take this down to zero like so. So you can see that solid black masks it out. And then if I have solid white, then it allows the, the artwork to show through. Now let's say I choose a color in between. The colors are re irrelevant within the mask. It's just a matter of values. So if I choose that green, for example, you can see it's sort of an in-between value. And it allows the color through, but not at full strength. OK, so I'm going to delete that and this. Um, so yeah, as you can see, unlike Photoshop, I can't exactly see what I'm doing within the mask. So a little bit of a learning curve getting used to it. Um, so yeah, to start off, I'm going to mask out this whole area. Since most of it's going to be the white of the keyboard, I'll make that solid black. And now that I've blacked that out, I'm going to build in the shadows using a gradient. So I'm going to just use the rectangle tool. And I'm kind of having to guess where the edge of this is. And if I make this black and white gradient, you can see that as it goes from white to black here, the black blocks it out, the white allows it to show through. So I'm going to make this shadow a little, a little smaller, a little more abrupt. OK, and then I'm going to make another one here across the top. I want this gradient to go this direction here. Just go ahead and duplicate this one and simply flip it like so. So you can also see there's a little problem here where the gradients are overlapping each other, uh, sort of blocking each other out. So in order to eliminate that issue, so that they can work together instead of against each other. I'm going to set those to screen so that only the whites are active. And there we go. OK, now for the grain portion. So we have these nice gradients, but they're just, you know, unlike the one up here, these are perfectly smooth. So here's how we bring in the grain. So now that I have those selected, you need to keep those selected. I'm going to go up here to Effect and then texture, and then grain. And now here I get a little preview. It's only showing one of them, but, but all three are selected. 
so don't worry there. Uh, these are the settings that I have as my default. Uh, if yours are not the same as this, may, maybe try this and uh, see how this works for you. The intensity is at 50, contrast at 34, and then you can see there's a, a number of different um, grain types that you can do in here. I'll just click on a couple of these so you can kind of see what they do. You can play with those all you want, but what I want is this stippled, and I'm going to hit OK. And there is the grain effect. So uh, pretty pretty simple. Um, well, maybe it's not that simple, but, but uh, let me zoom in and show you how this works. So, so much like Illustrator, or I'm sorry, much like Photoshop with the dissolve settings, you can see that it's it's basically just individual solid pixels, um, which is nice for for this sort of uh, airbrush effect. You know, when you zoom out, it, it actually looks pretty pretty nice, and uh, and I think works well for certain certain settings. Um, so you can see, by the way, I can't touch anything. I'm trying to click and drag and nothing's happening. And uh, the reason is because I'm still in the mask mode. So in order to get out, I click over here on the um, shape, the red shape itself. That brings me back out of the mask mode. And now I can edit things and move them, etc. I'm actually gonna change that now to my black color that I have. By the way, you can see this these little hairlines. That's just an illustrator artifact of uh, the anti-alias. Um, but when I import this into Photoshop, uh, normally you cannot see those. Uh, another thing that's interesting to know and maybe important depending on what your settings are at is uh, in order to change the resolution of this grain, I don't actually, there's nothing within the, the filter itself that allows you to play with that. So let me go back in here just so you can see what I mean. So there's nothing in here that talks about resolution. So the only way to affect that is by going up here to the effect document raster effects settings and simply changing what those are. Yours might be to set, set to 72. Um, my default is set to 300. Um, but you can actually change it to whatever you want. I'm going to try 800 just to kind of show you how that would affect things. So it takes a minute to process, but there you go. You can see it's a, you know, it's a bit smoother, a little more of an airbrush effect, in fact. So anyway, I am going to quickly just demonstrate one more. So there you go. Consider subscribing. It's been a while since I've posted anything, but uh, I'll continue to do more. Um, thanks for watching, and please let me know if you have any questions or comments. Thank you.